I'm so appreciative to have uh, the amazing and uh, magnanimous, stupendous, just all world uh, healer. Many of us know Dr. Karina personally because she has literally offered uh, her greatest gifts and skills to bless many of us who have been in need of um, therapeutic support, mental health, healing, just life <laughs> guidance. Um, and so when we wanted to include a part of our service to just have some healing and therapeutic support, knowing that we all have been dealing with so much very recently, and uh, this is even on Pentecost Sunday, the uh, last day of mental uh, health awareness um, and domestic violence awareness, all these different kinds of awareness, we thought it'd be great uh, to include uh, Dr. Karina. So welcome, Doc. Thank you for joining us on uh, this morning. Thank you for having me. Yes. I appreciate the call. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, as we uh, have decided to put a healing component and conversation into our uh, liturgical and worship experience for our virtual church service this morning, um, I just want you to speak to this moment we're in. I know myself, uh, I had to really spend uh, the day in bed uh, processing and 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 mourning and weeping the trauma that was uninvited uh, that came rushing uh, right back into my mind, my heart, my body um, mm -hmm. Monday and Tuesday uh, after I watched the, uh, the the killing and the lynching of uh, Brother George Floyd and 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 I know that trauma is compounded. Uh, the with these last few days is a bit tough watching um, the. The, the, the uprisings all across the country. Uh, certainly these last few weeks have been tough with the uh, multiple uh, events of slangs that have been happening. And of course, the, the, these last few months have been tough. So there's just compounded trauma, lots of it uninvited uh, that has overtaken us. What would you say um, to this moment we're in? And we'd love to just hear some of your quick thoughts on um, you know, your read on this, this, this season. Yeah, thank you for saying that. And again, thanks for the invitation to join you virtually. And this has been an exceedingly tumultuous time. Um, I think that as, as people who are living here in community, as black and brown people, as folks who are allies and co-conspirators, that the, the toll that these have taken on us individually and collectively has been devastating. Um, of course, under the condition of sheltering in place, when many uh, folks in our communities are already struggling, we're also already feeling the distance and the, like, the tenuousness of relationship and community to then have these additional uninvited traumas, as you say, come in has been... Uh, unlike anything that I think I have known in my lifetime. I was talking with my son earlier today, who's 14 and a young black man, and really wondering how, how this will shape him and that we're in this living in this big question mark right now. There are a lot of things that I think we know through our lineage, we know through generations, the impact of harm, the impact of trauma, and then it's another other thing to be living through it with so much unknown about what what will be happening next week what will be happening next year it's a really it's a really trying time yeah I mean as someone who um, you know I call myself a bootleg counselor because you know <laughs> a BA and did I have a degree in drug and alcohol counseling and so you know I've done the addiction studies and done some some therapeutic work but you are a professional and you know how our bodies work, you know how the brain chemistry and all these hormones and endorphins and all these things. Can you just explain what stress is doing to us? Like just functionally, what, what is happening in our body that is kind of contributing to some of us having huge mood swings. Some of us are, you know, experiencing this, this trauma in lots of different ways. And unfortunately in church, sometimes we, make it an issue about our faith when sometimes it's just about our physiology. It's, it's just about our ability right. to engage in certain practices that, that help us mitigate some of the, the ways stress 
and trauma is impacting us. Can you just say a bit about that physiological component, but also then um, how should we and what should we do when we feel pain and anger and sadness? Um, this, what, what, what would you say if you riff on a few of those things? Yeah. Well, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is that there's a, a, an amazing researcher on trauma, Bessel van der Kolk, who has spoken and written extensively about trauma. And um, one of the books that I often recommend to folks is called The Body Keeps the Score. Mm. And it's- You ought to type that in the chat. Go ahead. The body- Yeah, I will. I'll type it, it in there. It. It's, <laughs> it's so a wonderful- Type it in the chat so you remember, but go ahead. Body keeps us. I'm doing it right now. There. Well, I'm telling the it's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's. Um, I would have it in there too for folks. It's. Um, it does a really clear, clear explanation of what trauma is and how it resides in our bodies, even when we no longer can consciously recall it in our mind. Mm. And so he describes trauma as when something happens and the body is unable to reset itself. Mm. And I feel like that's such a, a clear explanation because trauma is happening in different ways all of the time, right? A major surgery can be a trauma. Um, obviously these slangs that have been happening in the media are traumatic and we keep, we're continually exposed to them. People are posting them on social media, on the news. And so there's, there's this revisiting of it. And I think that when we think about how trauma exists in our body, that even if we talk about something, years have passed, we think that we're kind of quote unquote past it, beyond it. If we haven't done the work to dislodge it in our body, we have like a muscle memory, if you will, of that traumatic event. And that can show up as all sorts of additional health issues and often we're already facing a lot of health, health disparities. And so one example that I have is um, our migraines, for example, right? That there can be some, some effect that happens, some trauma that happens, and then the body responds by sort of holding on to this pain, this issue. Maybe you develop some sort of a back problem during this event. And then when you are re-experiencing the trauma, those things flare up. I would say that what you were talking about earlier, that you had to stay in the bed and just rest, I feel like that is something that is under, I think if we're doing it mindfully and intentionally, this is different than I'm in bed for nine, 10 days and I can't get out of bed. But if you're making a choice about, I actually just need to rest, recalibrate my body, cry, be angry, be with myself. So until I can feel more resilient and understand like, how am I going to now re-engage with community, family, and the world in a way that's not just depleting, but that's also from a place of action and res restoration. Yeah. It's so important to get that rest. And I think that that's one of the first ways that trauma shows up for us is that our sleep is disrupted. Either we're not falling asleep, we're not staying asleep, we're sleeping too much or more than we were. And so really paying attention to those things, paying attention to what's happening in your body, what's different than it may have been last week or last month, and giving voice to that. Right? Our bodies hold tremendous wisdom. We are sentient beings and we are moving through our lives in these bodies in relationship with other bodies and that gives us so much information that we often sort of cut off from the neck down mm -hmm. and we live in a world often from the neck up that's very intellectual and conversational and thought oriented if we stop and pause and check in with ourselves and that can happen in any number of ways there's often a lot of information there that can support us in moving through whatever it is that we're experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. I, I um, want to encourage all of us as we're just hearing this to, um, to, to check in a little bit with yourself. A lot of us this whole week have been um, dealing with trauma and we, you wouldn't call it trauma. Maybe, maybe, you do, maybe you don't. Um, you call it anger. Some you call it fears. Some you call it pain. 
but a synonym for all of those words is Trump. And so I think all of us as a congregation just need to appreciate that our kids are experiencing trauma about this, not just the yes. trauma of this recent lynching, as I call it, but also the trauma mm -hmm. of coronavirus, of sheltering in place, of having to be uh, inside the home nonstop, not at school with their friends. It's a trauma. And, and so I do think if uh, we take Doc's point seriously, which I do, that the body keeps a score, um, then mm -hmm. we all need to be listening to our body about what score, <laughs> what's the score of this game, right? Absolutely. And, and, and be tuned into that. I, 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 I want to, you know, engage a little bit more. Maybe we're just going to have to do a longer Zoom conversation uh, mm -hmm. during the week. But I, I didn't want to let this moment pass without you giving us a couple of concrete examples of what we can do to facilitate some healing throughout this week um, that, that, that uh, we can employ. Some of us have to go to work still. Some of us are, you know, being asked to return back to work because we're in phase two. Some folks are still sheltering in place and they got a million kids or responsibilities at home. So they don't have time to just stop the whole world. You know, the privilege I had that day of just staying in bed. I know a lot of folks had to just push through. So what are some practices that folks can do um, if they have five, 10, 15 minutes, uh, we probably got about three minutes for you to like actually model one. Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe just give us like a few lists of things that folks can do. And then I want to close it with you just modeling, um, uh, one of these, these, these practices of, of healing mm -hmm. and centering and mindfulness, um, and lead us all through the congregation. So, uh, as she prepares to do that, I want you to prepare yourself at home, you know, Get some room if you need some room. Get in a quiet space because I think I want us to practice at least one of these healing practices. Um, integrate that into our worship series. So, Doc, give us a, a sense of what are some I, some thoughts about sure. things we can do, and then uh, you have a few moments to lead us through a closing a closing practice. Great. So, some of the things that you can do. And you can do these alone, you can do these with your family, with the folks with whom you're quarantined. I would say uh, the one that I'll guide you in is just a brief grounding. So I'll save that one until the end. I would say if you don't have a lot of time, it can happen in three to five minutes. If you have 10, that's even better. You can do it while you're in the shower, I think, or take a bath and really use that time as like having a mantra, having something that brings you peace and as your wash off, giving yourself that time to really be present with yourself in that way that you're doing something that in that moment is you caring for yourself. You can turn on music and have a dance party with your family and in your house and just taking five minutes to really be again in your body. How do you be in your body? I think these things around eating well, nourishing yourself, practicing, getting getting quality and adequate sleep, which is really hard these times. But maybe it means going to bed a little bit earlier than you normally do. So there are just ways that are really basic things that are often the most challenging for us to do. Um, I know that we're overextended. We're taking care of children and elderly and, the lo and our loved ones and our community. And so this idea of we can't fully be present for others unless we are ourselves replenished. And so have pick some small step. Um, I will invite everyone to just get comfortable in your seat, wherever you are, on the floor, in a chair, on a couch. And if you feel comfortable, if you feel safe to close your eyes, you can do that. And if not, you can just focus on the floor a few feet in front of you. And we're just going to start by finding our breath. You don't have to change your breath. You don't have to deepen it. Just notice it. So slowing it down a little bit. And noticing the inhale. And the exhale. Mm 
Notice what sounds you might hear in your room, in your space, in your home. And just noticing those sounds as being sounds that help create the space that you're in. Notice whether there are any thoughts coming through your mind. Without judging them as good or as bad. Sort of picturing them like clouds going by in the sky. Notice what's happening in your body as you slow down, as you give yourself the gift of presence for a few moments. There might be some tightness. There might be spaciousness. Your heart might be pounding. And if there's anything that's feeling tight or needing some attention, see if you can breathe into that place. That might look like your shoulders, your hands, and take three more cycles of breath. This time seeing if you can let the breath travel as far down into your belly as possible. And when you feel complete with that breath, you can gently open your eyes and bring your attention back to your room with a soft gaze. Sometimes it's helpful to look at each corner of a room just to reorient yourself. And notice how your body feels now after having just a few minutes of time. The great Karina, Dr. Mm -hmm. Karina Montag. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate everybody just in the chat. Just say thank you to Dr. Karina. And um, we are going to bring her back and have uh, maybe a, an extended opportunity to pick her brain and um, let her lead some of us through some group therapeutic uh, practices um, that can help us get through the season. But thank you for joining us this morning and um, mm -hmm. we certainly love you so much. Pleasure. All right. I love you guys too. Thank you so much.